Shoo! Welcome back, folks, to another episode. Well, we're starting the day off. As you guys already know, the drill will take care of the animals. We do have slight, I wouldn't say issue. The, the problem's been resolved, okay? But an animal on the farm got hurt. This was yesterday. We weren't filming. Our dear beloved Dale. No, he's not dead. Don't worry. He's alive and well. Well, define well. But he's doing, he ain't dead, okay? And I don't think he's gonna die. Here's what happened. Short story for you. Wow, these animals are getting pissed because I'm not feeding them. So Dale decided one day, this was last week, he's gonna hop this fence, okay? So this fence here, that's been here for over a year and we've had Dale for well over a year he decides he's gonna climb this sucker so he scales it and jumps over we didn't see him do it okay he was just also we came down and buddy's out roaming right so he's out and then we're like okay whatever let's just put him back so we put him back he gets out again while we're down here and what it was was this fence post right here was leaning because big daddy Ralph likes to lean on stuff and so when he jumped up on it it kind of leaned and he could kind of climb it so we fixed it we straightened the t-post so these are the t-posts that were leaning and look they ain't freaking leaning no more like they were like giving it giving it a heck of a lean okay so we fixed it come out the next day and he's out again we have no idea how he's getting out so we put him back we're like okay maybe he'll just stop i don't know why he's getting out they have food they have water he's been in the same pen for a year yesterday we were driving by and we see dale and he's parked out right there he's hanging out he's limping and he's got blood on him he's got a cut on his leg what the heck happened? Come to find out, he hopped the fence, but when he hopped it, his hoof actually got stuck in one of these, which happened to Rick like a year, almost a year ago, because Rick used to hop this fence. And one day, Rick hopped it and his back foot got caught, but we were down here, and so we like, we're, you know, we're able to un get him unstuck, and since then, Big Daddy Rick has never tried to hop it again. So Dale was limping, he was blood, he wasn't doing well, so I called the vet, and they were about to close, so we rushed him in, and gave him x-rays, and c come to find out his foot's broken, and they put him in a cast. And so so now, that's Dale's, oh, he's in quarantine over there. He's by himself, he's hanging out up against that little feeder there. He's he's alive, he's just a goat in a cast, okay? Um, they put like a literal cast on, we gotta give him some medicine today. So I wanna get that out of the way. We're gonna feed these guys so they just kinda relax a little bit. And then we're gonna go in and hang out with our buddy Dale, comfort him, let him know that it's gonna be all right. He just got off the anesthesia last night and he's okay. The problem is, how do you fix that, okay? You've had the same pen, for over a year in the same goat. And all of a sudden now, he just wants to climb stuff. And I don't really know how to prevent him from trying. I mean, he can't climb now that he's got a broken foot. Once the cast comes off, we're gonna have to pay close attention. The only thing I think we could do is put some type of hot wire, but then see like, see all the animals can come hang out right here and they eat off these grain bins. If you have Ralph would be electrocuted right now. Yeah, so like, I don't wanna put a hot wire because like all my friends, like Carol, I come up and pet her. I ain't gonna be able to do that if there's an electric wire right here because she'll be scared of it. Isn't that right, Carol? That's what I'm saying. So anyways, that's the idea. Idea, but today's video is exciting. Oh, right over there, we've got some lovely gentlemen. They are cleaning out the mini. <laughs> really? They're cleaning out the mini pond. So, this mini pond, you guys always comment about it. Long story short, it leaked pretty much right out the gate after it was built, and then we put fish in it, and then the fish actually died and got sucked into the skimmer. Quit fighting the fence, Rick. So, they basically, like, right out the gate, we put fish in it, the fish died, and the pond leaked. Basically, it was almost fall by then, so we just let it be. And now they're coming out, hopefully, to fix the leak, to, you know, fill it up. Really? Can I help you? They're gonna fix the leak, refill the pond, and we are gonna stock it today and go fishing. But first things first, let's feed these animals. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna take this whole stuff. Yeah, there you go. There you go, come on, come on. We gotta feed everybody on this side now, because Dale, Dale's side occupies the entire other half there. That's the only place we could quarantine them. Yeah, maybe dump a pile a little further down there. I'll try to spread these guys out. We got, we're dealing with half the space now, the same amount of animals. So for the time being, they might be fighting a little bit. We'll try to spread it, spread out the feet a little bit. Oh, Rick, you save any for Dale? Oh, there's a bag in the shop. I'll go get it. Greg, what the hell? When did Greg get out? Greg, get back. Get back in the pen, buddy. Get back in the pen. <laughs> I have no idea how Greg got out. We just I went to go get some food and all of a sudden Greg's out the pen. Get back in the pen. He don't even fly. One more and we gotta go feed Dale. Come here, Dale. Alright, Dale, I gotta give you some medicine, buddy. Come here, Dale. Oh, poor little Dale. Look at him. They even this. wrote get well Dale on the Yeah, cast. they they wrote on his cast. Come on, Dale. You alright, buddy? You want some grain? Hey, we got some grain over here, pal. Hey. You want a little bit? You want a little bit of grain? You can see his cast. It says get well soon, Dale. 
He's getting around. He's getting around just fine. But he's got a full blown. I've never seen a goat with a full blown calf. Four weeks. I think it's four. Yeah, four weeks. He's gonna have it on. You wait. Is that not enough? You wanna here? Here, I'm not gonna make you climb. Don't. Hey, speaking of that, quit freaking doing that. Quit climbing stuff. I know you're a goat and that's what you do, but like, you know, after a year of being here, you would have think that you wouldn't try to all of a sudden climb in the fence. You gotta quit doing that, buddy. All right, let's see if we can get him to eat this medicine. Dale's cast removal. This is in June. So two tablets orally once a day for 14 days. Dale, you're gonna be in quarantine for 14 days. Is that good for your leg? I don't think the doctor said that you should do that. We gotta make sure he eats it. Probably could try to handle one and he'd probably oh, eat you it. You think he would eat that? Oh yeah, he eats anything, dude. No, he don't want it. I could put it in there. I just don't want it to fall out. Bama, you don't need any medicine, buddy. I'm just afraid, like, putting it on the ground. Yeah. All right, let's see. Come here, buddy. Hey, big boy. There. Go ahead, Dale. Go ahead. Eat that other side where their medicine is. You're going to be all right, buddy. Dale's a trooper. I wouldn't be this happy if I had a broken foot. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, I'll pop up the X right here. So as you can see, right? It's Well, it's kind of hard to see, but it's it's down by his hoof. It wasn't his leg. It was more his foot. Da oh, Dale, you didn't even eat him. I was going to say, what if you just put, like, a little scoop in my hand in it or your hand? All right, let's try this. Right here. There you go. Okay. All right, so there's one, one pellet left. Okay, you just ate the second one. Don't spit it out now. Keep munching. All right, I think it's down. All right, we got to give him some water. You want me to just put the rest in Yeah, you can water? give him the rest of it. That's... That way he's nice and happy. nice and full, fat and happy. Yeah. All right, Dale, here's your water, buddy. There you go. Dale's doing all right. It was unfortunate. We were not expecting that. We pulled down. We're like, ah, Dale's bleeding. He's limping. His foot looks like it's broken. Doctor said goats will do goat things. I just hope he learned his lesson. Like I said, the, the problem is that we don't have a good solution. I mean, he's had the same pen for a year, and all of a sudden now he just wants to, you know, start climbing. And I don't know why. I don't know why he's climbing. It's not like he's, like, getting into the food or really anything. Like, he just likes to wander, I guess. So hopefully the broken foot maybe will uh, slow him down next time. Uh, if you guys have any ideas on how to keep a goat inside of a pen without adding electric fence, we could add electric fence. Like I said, it would just... it would. It wouldn't harm the other animals. It would just make it a little less enjoyable. Because, like, as you can see, he's eating right here. If there was a hot wire, he couldn't eat there. So then we're going to have to move all the food dishes inside. That means when we feed him, we got to go inside. It's just not as efficient that way. So, anyways, animals are fed, taken care of. We're going to run over to the pond, show you guys the before, kind of explain what the, the boys are going to do. And then we are going to go give it a dangle, try to catch some fish, some bluegills, some bass, stuff like that. Stay tuned. Shoo! All right, now, this is where you guys get to see a little before action, and then obviously we'll get to the after. So, this is the pond, the mini pond. Okay, you haven't seen it. You guys comment about it in every single video. You hadn't seen it for quite some time, and that's what she's looking like. Milk toast. Yikes. There's no fish living in there. So basically what happened is we had a couple, two, actually two leaks and the, the gentleman here already found the leaks. Um, but they're right by that waterfall. So that was causing the water to go down in the pond and then basically keep making it to where like it would be too shallow to keep the fish. So those two are fixed. So right now they're doing a little pump out. So all the water is going out and then this is the new water, crystal clean. Okay, so we're doing a 100% water swap. So they're gonna drain it, they're gonna power wash it, get all the sludge and stuff out, refill it, and get it ready for fish and that's what we're going to be doing we are going to be stocking this thing bringing it back to life and hopefully don't kill the fish again that's the idea maybe we'll start off with fish we don't care quite as much about no no offense banjo but bluegill they're a dime a dozen okay so eat them? It, if they die if, if grow, they no, if they grow them to be big in here oh, and then eat them yes if they don't die the if they don't die we will kill them okay for catching cooks but the idea would be put some bluegills in here and some bass and kind of keep an eye on it for maybe a few weeks if we don't have anything get KO'd then we can start bringing in some cooler fish my buddy Beamer uh, the fishery guy he's got some albino catfish he said he could sell to us and some other cool stuff but we don't want to put those in until we know we had to run this operation and we don't kill fish because last time we threw some bass in here and they just got absolutely KO'd in like one day so that's pretty much the plan so they're filling up the water they're draining it so we're gonna put time ups on them and while they're getting that ready we are going to be doing a little bit of dangling. Got to go catch the fish to put in here. Um, like I said, bluegills and bass would be on the agenda for today. And if it goes well, we can continue to stock in. You guys let us know what you think. What fish do you want to see us put in there? What I really want is I want fish that will come up and eat right out of our hand. You throw them a minnow, you throw them a goldfish, and whoop. Wow, bam, that's, it's like the best thing ever is coming and hand feeding the fish that are in there. So let us know what you guys think we should put in there. With that being said, we'll see you guys down at the pond. There's there's a fish in there? Camera, you're a liar. Wait, what? What's going on here? So there's a fish in there. There's no way, dude. Okay, we put like a bass or two and a, a couple bluegills and they died like right away. And now cat. they're saying there's fish. We had some catfish. Is it a Should catfish? We... we thought all the fish had died, you dude. You see it? It was right there. Wait, I didn't so get a good look at it. They, dude, they, it's a bass. What? How is that bass alive all winter? 
he he survived all winter. This thing froze over solid. Should we just leave like leave him, put him back in here once we? I say, would he make it in that or? I'm gonna put him in there. And okay. Then we'll him in here. Okay. All awesome. right. Awesome. Oh, you get a free fish. I had no idea. It's a little two pound largy. That's hilarious. He must. I mean, we must have just Imagine obviously not know how to with count. With the ice and everything. I can't believe he didn't he's die. He's the only one. With yeah. how cold it was this winter, I and mean, this thing's not very deep. I'm shocked that he was alive. Normally, you'll only get like six to eight inches of ice. Gotcha. On something like this. Yeah. So there's plenty of room down at the bottom. For them to see if he's hunkers on the bottom. He hasn't had food for six months. That's crazy. And he looks not that skinny, to be honest. No, he he looks pretty good. He's probably doing pretty good with everything that's in here. Once everything kind of woke up and yeah, that's crazy. Okay, well, we How got many fish you got. We, in we here? got, we got, we got one any. fish in there. <laughs> I swear they all died right away, and we literally just gave up on this pond. We're like, we'll fix it in the spring. It's already fall. I'm ready to go kill some ducks and shoot some deer. And there's a largy in here. So, all right, well, dope. Welcome back. How you doing geese? Come on. You want your corn? Come get come come on come get we'll give you some corn. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. We'll give you some corn. We brought, oh, we brought some corn down for our friends here. There you go, bony apple feet. Yeah, go ahead. They said nah. Nah. They, they don't trust you. Why are they so loud? Like what? What is the significance of being this loud? I'm not just. I don't think I quite understand it. But we had to feed our our geese friends. We always bring them corn. They're they're our pals. They're hanging out. So we are ready to give it a dangle. We've got a cooler. We our goal would be three bass and three bluegills. That's my goal. Pagers. Big, 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 big bluegills. The ones we can feed, pellet feed and stuff. And ideally, the three bass we take out of here are small, under 13, the ones that we would remove and put into the cabin pond. We can put them over here and try to grow them, like feed them goldfish and minnows and pellets and worms and really just like bolt them up over the entire spring, summer and fall and then take them and hopefully we kind of get them out of their stunted zone over the next six months. And then we can put them back in here and if they didn't get out of their stunted zone and they're just looking like they're not worth a whole lot, we can throw them in the cabin pond. So either way, we want Want some pan feed trained bass so it's like some of the best content ever i love it you guys love it so instead of going out and uh, buying fish we're gonna try using what we got which is already fish inside the backyard pond so get the cooler ready give it a dangle here and let's get to fishing you ready banjo yep the ss surf and turf we are ready to give a dangle, but I do want to say huge shout to Low, which is what this boat is right here. We converted it from a John boat to a bass boat. Shout out to Low for sponsoring today's video. We've been using their boat, and so far, by far, our favorite to use on the pond. Look, we got three beefcakes up there. It's nice and big. It's, it's nice and big, but it's also small enough that you can maneuver around this little pond here. So anyways, I better jump on before the sucker floats away. Yeah, look at that. Didn't even budge. Three beefcakes. It's beefcake approved. So anyways, huge shout out to Low for sponsoring today's video. We are ready. Banjo, you're on bluegill duty. Yeah. You feeling good? I feel confident. It's not too windy. No, we got a nice, nice warm. calm day. Forgot the Mondo's big rip, so I'm not gonna be able to see them if they're in the water. And I'm gonna try fishing for larges. I've got a little flat banger on, just not really the weather conditions for it. It's a little too calm, but might always go over to the old Bandito lunker log and stuff like that. So three and three is the goal. Wish us luck. Starting off the old flat bang. Said it's a little calm. Be nice. Like if it's row, I mean, we can still catch fish in it. But the bass, I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh my gosh, just got smoked. That's a largey too. What kind of what kind of trickery is that? Do you imagine that? First cast, dude. That's a good one too. Bro, it's a walleye. Shut up. First walleye I've ever caught in my pond. It's a walleye, bro. I think we got it. Oh move. my gosh, dude. That's a big dude, dude. That's we, an eater. Can we move it to the, the pond? Oh, no, they, they, won't they won't live, dude. Deeper water, huh? Dude, that's an eater wall. I have never caught one in my pond. We stocked those suckers, they were and they, like, were, they were small. They were like this. That's crazy. It's too bad today's not a catch and cook day, boys. Shoo! The old walleye. Wow. I mean, we could technically move them over to the cabin pond. That's, not that's our catch idea. and cook. That's okay, not we're gonna idea. we're gonna move them. Our cabin ponds are catch and cook pond. Cause if I haven't I haven't caught a walleye out of here in two years, I probably not won't catch another one. But if you put them in the cabin pond, yeah. you have a better chance. A little smaller body of water, and that's an eater. He's a little small, but I'd I'd munch on that guy. All right, Walter. There you go, pal. Walter's gonna big chill in there for a little bit. We probably don't want to leave Walter in there for too long, so we might want to catch these fish quick. You got one? Oh yeah. Oh, is that a bass? Yeah, it's a little bass. Yeah, we'll take him. We'll take him. We gotta grow him up. Yeah, look that's at that a, guy. That's a little guy. That'll actually work out great because we can see how big we can get a little sucker like that. We, we want to take we want to take that size out anyway. Well, we'll see how he does in the pond. Oh, what what happened here, son? You snagged. He might have got me. 
Uh, that felt like a fish. Might have got me on the old tree. Oh, this is Banjo's territory. He should be getting these bluegills. I might have to switch to soft plastic. We don't have much wind. That's not helping the, it's helping the walleye bite, I guess. It's just kind of crazy that I caught that guy. But moving baits, they can do okay when it's calm like this, but a lot of times like flipping and pitching will catch more fish. Especially if the fish are shallow, it's kind of spawning. Lunker log's pretty tough to beat. Fish might win this battle. Oh, we got him. We're back. All right, I'm switching it up, folks. Crankbait, just ain't it. Too calm. Got something up my sleeve here. Weightless lunker log. Absolute guarantee to catch fish. If you guys are trying to fish pond, you don't know how to catch fish, weightless lunker log is probably your, your go-to. I'm gonna tie the sucker on, we're just gonna, and we're gonna start filling up that cooler. Right here, folks, some lunker log action. Straight, fresh out. Ooh, fresh out the pack. What color did you pick? Watermelon, red flake. What other color is there? For, well, for clear water, I guess I should say. If you've got, which we've got, it's pretty clear today. I mean, a green pumpkin works pretty good, but I mean, watermelon red flake, if your pond is clear, you know, ish, you got a few feet of visibility, watermelon red flake's pretty tough to beat. If you don't have a clear pond, and it's dirty, black with blue flake. Those are kind of my two go-tos. I, I alternate those. A lot of colors work, but for me, I feel like just straight up pond bassin, that little duo right there, that's it's pretty tough to beat. So let's catch fish. Oh God, yeah. What the heck happened there? Just about lost my rod. That was first cast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What I just say? You tie it on and the fish is jumping the boat. Oh, yeah. Yew. Perfect size fish. That looks like a little minnow cruncher guy. So we're going to be feeding him as minnows and goldfish. That's perfect. He's on like the healthier side of the stunted, but he's definitely not a mega. So he's going in the box. We got two bass. So we need one more bat. What, what's up with the bluegill back there, bud? This cove should have some bluegill. Cast up in there, Banjo. Let's see a bluegill. All right. Oh. Something on me. Is it popping it? I don't know oh, if it's a bass. I just or... had a bite. That might have been a bluegill. I could see. I think there was a bass on it. Really? Yeah, you might need to toss in there. I think so. I think you might need to toss where I just cast. I think I had a bluegill. Really? Yeah. Really wish I would have brought the Mondas today. I know. Oh, got him. Oh, we got him. Yep, another largey. Get in the boat, son. You. Oh, what's going on? Why are you bloody? What happened, Big Rick? You, you didn't swallow, did you? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, he did. Big rip. Well, he uh, he kind of swallowed it a little bit. So I'm not confident in my fish keeping alive skill abilities. So we're actually just going to toss him back. He should be okay. He wasn't like gut hooked. He just, as you saw, he came out. He is a little bloody. So I just, I just don't want him to get stressed in a small pond environment and change his, the best, basically the best chance for that guy to survive. Put him right back where you caught him. So we're not going to take him. We got to keep fishing and hopefully don't gut hook the next one. I don't know how I gut hooked it. I didn't let him eat it that long. Oh, there's one. There's one. There's another one. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. We'll take him. He's a little smaller than the one that's already in the box. That's three bass, Banjo. Hey, I got one of the three. True. Look at that guy. See, that's exactly the size you want to get rid of. Well, we got three bass. I guess I got to get on bluegill duty. Bluegill. What's what, what? I need like a nickname, I feel like. Sunfish Sally. You're bluegill Banjo and I'm Sunfish Sally. You're going to catch one right there. You think so? on it. You think so? There might not be any bluegill in this little cod. Apparently there's largemouth for some reason. But I don't know about the old sunnies. Forgot the mind us. Big rip. Don't ever forget that. Because we'd be able to see the bluegills right now. I think we might have to hop to a different cove here. I don't see any swimming. Yeah, if those aren't getting bit. <laughs> if the live here. arms ain't getting bit, you probably should move. Yep. Money. That's it, Banjo. It's going to happen. You think so? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, big rip. It came off. I had him, son. I had him. Oh, oh, we're hooked up. Bluegill, yes. Look at that guy. She just a little wee guy. We want bluegills that are big enough to not get eaten by the other bass, but we also want to see how big we can grow a bluegill, feeding it pellets and worms and stuff. Well, we got one bluegill. We just need two more, and we should be good to go. All right, that's a fish. Yep. Nice. Yep. Oh, that might be a largey. She's stripping drag boys. No, big sunny. Big sunny. She. Look at that guy. Number two. That's a, that's the old fat Sheila right there. I'll take her. All right. Two. We got one more to go, Banjo. Come in clutch here. Oh, oh he's got one. Oh, rip. Oh, he let go of it. There you go, Sally. She's in. Oh, she, yep. She, oh, I think he's got it. He's got it. Yep. Yeah, clutch fish. Clutch fish. Last one. Be a bluegill. Oh. What happened there? It just came off. Big rip. Is your arm still there? Yeah, my arm's still there. Really? That was the old bot. I better get rigged back up. Oh, 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 you got one. Banjo, oh. Oh, rip, I had too much. Oh. I think he, I was Banjo G. I got, got one. one. Oh, Banjo. he's ripping. Definitely a sunny. Definitely a good sunny. Nice. Ew, that's big Sheila there, son. Woohoo! Go ahead and catch another one, in case one dies or something. Well, 
We got three of each in the box, plus a wallet that we got to go release at the cabin pond. I think Banjo can catch one more. Just off my game lately. You just, you, you lost your Dude, mojo. That was a 2020 thing. Really? I need to find something new. That's what happens when you get a girlfriend. You lose your, you lose, you, you, you lose your mojo. Oh, really? What yeah. happens when you get married? You get it right back. What about oh, okay. a little kiddo, a little, little beefcake? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't gotten that point yet. I'm not you sure. Pass on your talents then. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. You got to pass it on. Yeah, you got a few more months until you're just cheeks. I'm cheeks. Yeah. In October, I'm just I'm useless at that point. <laughs> oh, do you oh. see that? Oh, he's eating the bobber. Oh, he's got on. You, you got him. You got a bass. You got a bass. Oh, God. Oh, miss my oh, oh, God. I just about died. Come here, Sheila. Ate the bobber. Yew. Look at that. We'll take it. Dude, absolutely. I was just he reeling broke. it in. Yeah. Dude, he was hitting that bobber. Bass are munching today. Yeah. Well, we'll take him instead of a blue guy. I'd rather have him anyway. Perfect. Sure. Big bass guy now. <laughs> Big two, bass guy? Two bass, no bluegills. Come here, Big Jim. Get old Walter out Hey, there. hey. You settle down, buddy. Look at that guy, such a pretty little fish. You're the only walleye in here, okay? So just go do big walleye things. Look at them teeth right there. Vicious little sucker. Third species in the cabin pond now? Crappie, bluegill, Four. bass. There you go. We got like almost everything we want in here now. Honestly, I think the walleye is going to do good in here. We've been dumping tons of bait. If you've seen in previous videos, we've put thousands and thousands of minnows. We've put the little crappie in there, some bluegills and stuff like that. It's slowly but surely kind of picking up, but we're not fishing it yet. We kind of want to get it fully stocked. Ideally, that walleye is probably going to chill in this big bowl here, which is like maybe a half acre, three quarter acre. And we've got it down to about 15, 17 foot. The reason why we didn't release him is because he'll be a little bit easier to catch in here. Hopefully. I mean, there's a chance we'll probably never see him. We might. It just kind of depends on what's going on. And maybe he was getting ready to spawn and that's why he was so shallow. So maybe he'll have little walleye babies in here. I don't know how that all works, I guess. But walleye is in the catch and cook pond. We're gonna take these guys in total. Hey, you stop that. We have what? Two blue, three bluegills and four bass. Yeah. See, that's a pretty good sized bass. Is that the one you caught or? I don't, I don't remember. I don't know if mine was. That's one of the. That was one of the bigger ones. But so it's gonna be. It's good. We got a few different sizes, and like the. So the idea is we should just constantly have a minnow tank that's got minnows in, and every morning bulk them up and see if we can grow these guys fast enough to get, like I said, out of that little stunted zone. And I know you can't grow fish like this, but if we can just get them bulked up, put a couple inches on, or maybe an inch or something like that, and then depending if they're still stunted, we'll probably just end up chucking them actually in here. If they aren't stunted, they kind of grow out of that stunt class zone where they can start eating those bigger bluegills, then we can put them back in the the main backyard pond. With that being said, the gentleman that fixing the pond should be done, ready to rock and roll. We should be able to put these guys right in. We'll see you guys at the mini pond next to the farming. Oh, there's the bass. How did I just see him? What are the odds of that? Look at him. He's, I don't know if you guys can see him. He's under that log. This is our friend who's been in here for like almost a year now. Let's see if I can grab this sucker. Hey, Billy, hand fishing. <laughs> Oh God, he's passed. Where'd he go? I lost him. I don't know where he went. But anyways, pond's done, folks. I didn't expect to see him. So that means I think we'll have five bass in here. But now you can see it's ripping. This is what we were uh, expecting here. Nice little water flow. If you guys missed us building this, there's some previous years from last year, but it's cleaning up a little bit. It's probably gonna take a day or two, but it really should be crystal clear by the end of tomorrow. And so we should be able to keep our fish in here. Hopefully they don't get KO'd. The water's already acclimated. They are not acclimated, but you know, the right potions of chemicals are already in place. So hopefully our fish don't die. That'd suck if we lost all these bass they're, they're they're good looking bass so we're gonna go ahead and get these guys in and see what they do all right friends you ready to go on an adventure we got one bluegill right here oh hang on now just a little guy see you later dude all right he's hanging out there's another bluegill look at that guy he's a little bigger oh see, there you go we got one more bluegill in here yep look at that pretty guy Choo. and then we've got little little bass it's a little squeaky mcgee guy look at that we've got this medium size it's like the classic stunted size large you were trying to get rid of so he should do nice and good in there. Oh yeah, the waters, water temp feels about the same. Should be all right. Another little stunted size. And this guy is on the upper class of stunted. He ain't too bad, but he'll be a good one. He should be the, the dominant fish of the bunch. And then hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll get big. I think that's one I think out of all these fish that we could potentially grow over the summer to get out of the stunted class, it's that guy. 
That guy, I think we can get big and bulky enough to where he can eat. Basically, he needs to be able to eat larger bluegill than what the bass in my pond currently can eat, right? So like, let's say every fish in my pond is 13 inches and they can only eat a four inch bluegill. If we can get this guy bulked up and bigger, he might be able to eat a four and a half to five inch bluegill, which there's a ton of bluegill in my pond that are that size, right? That are just a little too big for the bass to eat. There's so many of those. So if that guy can get to that size, then he will have basically unlimited food to where he can go from two and a half pounds, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and so on really, really quickly because he'll pretty much have all the food to himself, at least that class of bluegill. That's essentially kind of how that works. So these guys, hopefully they don't die. Like I said, we're going to check on them a little bit later tonight and hopefully in the morning, go get some minnows. That being said, you guys stay tuned. Well, just kidding, folks. We just called the uh, bait store and they said we have no minnows. So he said that check back Monday. So next week, we don't want to keep you guys waiting that long to see this video. So we're going to go ahead and hit that upload button and maybe you guys can return the favor and hit that like button and subscribe button and drop a comment down below. What else do you want to see us put in this pond? What other videos do you guys want to see? Let us know in the comment section down below. Hopefully you guys at home enjoy today's video. We'll catch you on the next episode and peace.